On Mindanao, a major island in the southern Philippines, foreign-based companies are destroying the environment and robbing local and native people of their livelihoods. Corporate agribusinesses like U.S.-based Dole, Del Monte, Monsanto, along with international and Philippine mines, are polluting waterways and destroying the surrounding farms. Chinese, European, Canadian and Filipino mines are stripping away the mountains to get at what some estimate to be the largest iron deposit in the world. There are also some of the most significant gold, nickel and copper reserves in Asia. Despite its natural riches, most of Mindanao is struggling, with six out of the ten poorest provinces in the impoverished country. Protecting and paving the way for foreign corporations is the Philippine military, forcibly evacuating residents from their lands and even killing and kidnapping. Panang among pagkuan sa sundalo, sila man yud ang mga protector sa mga langyang kampani. The Real News Network spent time in Caraga in northeast Mindanao, one of its poorest regions but richest in terms of minerals and agriculture. Sister Stella is an advocate for Mindanao and has seen the damage to the environment and people because of the invasion by cash crops like Dole's bananas. Biodiversity, this is beauty, this is creation. All has the place, all has the life, all has the, the right to live. But with capitalism, with massive planta uh, with uh, agribusiness plantations, only one has the right to live, and that is banana. Rogelio Montero, an organic rice farmer in Tago and chairperson of a peasant organization, talked to us about his community and farm, which is now surrounded by Dole's banana trees. Humana, uh, humana ang kuan kining naana ang Dole sa palibot sa mga mga magu mga naana pabilin pang humayan wala pa siya na pa uh, convert na to sa saging sagaran katung ano ang epekto nga to sa tanom mas midaghan ang dangan dangan mga piste na kun nga uh, dito sa palibot niya delikado pa gyud pud ang kuan pagabot sa kuan kaning ang mga tubig kay ang ilang mga drainage padung man sa min nga sa pa so dunay dunay na ikabalaka sa mga magoma nga kun ang mga dunay uh, aning mahimong kadaot o sakit Dole has over 13,000 hectares of banana plantations in the region more acreage than the entire land area of the city of San Francisco Growing cash crops like bananas and oil palm means two important staples, corn and rice, are being displaced, and so are the farmers that grow them. Dole is taking over leases and lands that tenant farmers used to till. Now those farmers work for Dole and don't earn enough to survive. For the farmers who continue to till the land, like Rogelio, the fields and waters are increasingly polluted and the farmers are under constant threat of being displaced. They also must contend with the Philippines' hacienda system. This system gives all the power to landowners, corporations, and the entrenched Philippine aristocracy. Most farmers are tenants that till the land owned by others. Tenant farmers must borrow money for the supplies they need and struggle to earn enough to pay back the loan. The Philippine government perpetuates a system of large landowning families like the current president's own family. Tenant farmers can't survive without subsidies as a price paid for their goods in local markets aren't enough to cover their expenses. Multinationals like Dole, on the other hand, are at a huge advantage. They're well capitalized and they sell their cash crops in a global market. In contrast, when rice growers sell their harvest, the price they get is so low that they have to sell nearly all their rice in order to make their loan payments. This leaves farmers without enough food to feed their families. Corporate plantations aren't the only destructive forces in Caraga.
large-scale corporate mining is tearing down mineral-rich mountains and sending them off to be processed in another country. We have seen by our own eyes how our mineral ore, our nickel laterite, the red soil, are being uh, uh, carried and shipped to Japan, to Australia, to China. This is Shenzhou nickel mine, stripping the mountain of its ore and shipping it to China right from its private port where the toxic runoff is flowing into the sea. The mines contaminate waterways, killing crops, livestock and people. We spoke to a farmer and fisherman who live near a Philippine-owned nickel mine in Sorogao del Sur, Mark Ventures. So that areas are, are, are also surrounded by the, mine, by the mining areas. So ang uh, medyo na ang nahitabo kibale dia kanang uh, tungod kay ang mining areas to sa taas uh, from high portion then the agricultural is from down so desertion during the during the rainy days will flow down to to the river and of course uh, the irrigation dam will be affected Arsenio told us contaminated water from the mines is killing crops and fish and these waterways are the only source of drinking water for the local residents. Many people displaced from their livelihoods now work for mining corporations, but the work is typically seasonal, on contract, with low wages, and without health benefits, despite the hazards. How can these corporations be getting away with this? Upon the recommendation of the World Bank, the Philippines liberalized its mining policies in the Mining Act of 1995 to attract more foreign engineering and capital. The act allows foreign corporations 100% ownership of the minerals, even though under the Philippine Constitution, foreign ownership is limited to 40%. The government only taxes 2% of the value of the mined ore, so now the government is basically giving away its mineral riches. Threats to the community aren't just to their environment and livelihood, the Philippine military is terrorizing local and native people to make way for mining, logging, and agricultural corporations. Since this farmer was a little girl, her indigenous Manobo community has been forced off their land at least four times by the Philippine military. <laughs> The village children also leave behind their education as the entire community is forced into the jungle. Kay diha sa among pagbakwit sakit yud unta para sa among mubiya sa among kaugalingong panimalay kay sa mopuyo ka didto nga lisod ang CR lisod ang tubig lisod ang pagkaon ana siya lisod ang katulganan a Manobo chieftain and the chair of an indigenous organization told us about the military's past and ongoing intimidation matag military operation na agyud sa amo ang kahadlok mahadlok kami kung kinsa na pud ang sulod nga ipulang tahon sa amo mga ginsakpan kinsa na pud ang sulod nga patyon o kinsa na pud ang sunod nga mawala na dili na mamu namu ikita o dili na namu makita dili na namu mahibaluan kung patay pa ba sila o buhi kay hangtod karon adunay mga membro sa organisasyon nga nawala panahon sa military session na hangtod karon wala na mi mahibalo kung asa na sila karon wala na mi mahibalo kung buhi pa ba sila o patay na Local cooperative miners 
are also being threatened by the military. So, bakit ayaw ng mga sundalo na nandito kami nagtatrabaho at ayaw nila maging umagat yung aming pang, uh, hanap buhay, gawa ng gusto nila na malagyan dito ng malaking mina. Yun lang ang pinaka, yun ang pinaka gusto ng mga sundalo. Siguro ito ay ano din, sa, gover sa government natin. Josie told us the military blasted their tunnels, burned down their houses, and destroyed their pipes. Mining is their only source of income. These local miners don't use chemicals, water diversion, open pits, or deforestation, unlike corporate mines. When they sell the gold to local buyers, they share the proceeds equally throughout their cooperative. But these small-scale miners are a threat to corporate interests, and that's why the military is after them. While the situation in Caraga is dire, with agribusiness, mining and logging destroying their environment and communities, local people are finding strength in organizing. In Hanayan, in the jungles of Surugao del Sur, a community's solidarity against corporate intrusions is based around a school founded by five native tribes. They founded Alcadev, the alternative learning center for agricultural and livelihood development. The school teaches farming, community development, and what's happening because of the corporations and military. They teach not just to high schoolers, but adults as well. One of the groups that established the school is Mapasu, an organization of indigenous peoples. The full Cebuano name translates into persevere in the struggle for the next generation. The school in Mapasu fosters solidarity, which is why the military keeps trying to shut the school down. Tungod kay ang Mapasu organization, usaman siya ka nagasupak sa mining companies, mauna nga kanunay mi nilang ginabalik-balik ginaoperasyon. Unya, nakita naman nila nga ang Mapasu na anagi ligong panaghi usaug na anay kalambuan sa mga tao. Tungod kay Sa tinud anay ang mga project din hin, wala man siya gihatag sa gobyerno kung dili ipaningkamutan ni siya sa katawhang lumad nga mabarog ang eskwelahan So far Hanayan has been successful in fending off mining corporations Sa kasamtangan din hi sa mapaso organization adunay mga nag-uungong nga mga mina nga gusto nga musulod pero tungod sa kusganon na pagbabag sa katauhan, panagiusa sa katauhan, wala sila maka, makasulod, wala pa makasulod. In the nearby community of cooperative miners, it's clear that they're ready to fight against the corporations and military to defend their way of life. Na kapag, kapag pumasok dito ang malalaking kumpanya, ay hindi kami papayag at yun ang sinasabi namin, hindi na baling mamatay sa, sa bala. This is Diane Ruiz for The Real News Network.